Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Storyteller Spotlight. Today we're going to look really, really quickly at this Mobius book. This is kind of an intro. Um, I just got a text from uh, the printing shop that I go to and um, the guy that is can knows how to work the machine is only going to be there for like another 45 minutes. So I actually have to split. Hey, Mike Heisler, I know that guy. That's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to do, uh, Mobius last weekend when I did, um, the Travis, um, Storyteller Spotlight, and, uh, I couldn't find these books really quickly, um, so, uh, again, this is just gonna be an intro, this will be a 10 minute video, and then I actually need to split and run to the printers, I'm on a really, really tight deadline right now, um, but, uh, I wanna appreciate, like, I've been getting notes, uh, about Blaster Kid, and um, I just got sidetracked for a couple of weeks. I've been writing the final script, um, but uh, yeah, there, there's no um, big reason why I haven't posted updates. I mean, the updates is just basically I'm I'm finalizing my script, and and um, once I put sort of. Uh, a page count in my mind then I really needed to be disciplined and hammer that out. So, um, don't worry, there'll be more updates coming over the next, um, like week or two. Uh, but I just, I, I didn't really have much that I could, um, say other than I'm, <laughs> I'm working on it. So anyway, but, um, yeah, so this is a, like a collected book of, of, uh, Mobius's work and, um, they're really, really interesting. There's quite a few hard covers that you can go collect. Um, there's Chaos, um, what is this one called? Fusion, this one is Metallic Memories. Um, but uh, you know you can find them on eBay. They, they I don't think are super expensive. They're really, really fun. And what makes them fun is just the experimental um, nature of, of his work. He was a very, very disciplined cartoonist and has done very large bodies of work um, with sequential storytelling. But, but him at play is really, really fun, and it's it's just always exciting to see. I, I, I definitely think that now, because we have the internet and we have access to just about every artist on the planet that, that at least wants to share sort of their, their daily activities or, or body of work that they've done, one, you can catch up really fast of what they've done. Um, man, my cat's going nuts. It wants in the office so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mobius. Come on, dude. You know I love that. Uh, <laughs> but um, these books really were something kind of special. Um, I think when they originally came out. I mean, I got got them like probably starting in the '90s or, or, or you know late '90s, early 2000s. So um, back then, you know, the internet wasn't rolling as hard as it was now. So seeing such a, a wide variety of work was really kind of astounding. And I think now, even too to some extent. Um, you can get your fix from, you know, 80 different artists in a day. So you've got, uh, the one artist that, that does the one style and then the other guy that does this style. And then the other artist does, Oh, this is very Robert Crumb. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, seeing one guy that put it all together like this was really kind of like, uh, impressive. And, and there's, uh, I think it's called finding Mobius on, on YouTube. It's a documentary that, that, uh, someone has uploaded and, uh, yeah, you hear Mike Mignola actually talk about that, like, like this is this guy, and this is this guy, too. Um, you know, now I, I think it, it might not be as uh, unique. And then also be, because he did it, um, you know, then that, that door has been open and other people will follow, which is cool and, and kind of the impact of it. But, uh, yeah, the guy is really, really incredible. So you've got this kind of Bigfoot cartoony style um I don't know the date that these particular pieces were. They're really, really nice, though. But, I mean, imagine if you just sat down and one day you drew this. And, you know, the next day, you know, you kind of did a few more of them. And then, you know, you just did stuff like this. It's really, really kind of cool um, as an artist to just play. I think sometimes we forget to play. Because <laughs> we're always working. I was talking to someone this morning. And I was telling them, like, how tight my deadline is. I mean, I'm, I'm literally doing... I mean, the speed that they want, I would basically do a book in two weeks, a 24 page book, no less. Um, it probably will dribble out a little past that, but I mean, in the next like six weeks, I potentially could do almost 70 to 80 pages of, of work. It'll probably be less than that only because I think the deadline will eventually, there'll be pages that will be hard that I won't be able to knock out as many as I, as, as, as like, I think the hope is, but yeah, I mean, deadlines in comics can be really, really insane. So 
when you see someone as prolific as Mobius, what you're really seeing is you're seeing what a normal uh, comic book artist actually produces. You know, that's how much art I, I saw. There was a um, a video of an artist, and he was talking about um, someone had asked him. He was like doing a store signing in Paris, and uh, he's sketching. And they asked, like, how did you get so good? And he goes, well, I've been drawing for 20 or 30 years, seven days a week, um, all day, all night. And a lot of us really do work that way. It's it's not that uncommon. It becomes a very kind of obsessive thing. Um, and, and not in an unhealthy way. I mean, I guess it could be construed that way. But but if I'm not doing anything, I'm working, you know. I'm not doing anything that I have to do. Beautiful colors. This is all hand colored. Man, this is so cool. But yeah, we'd be curious if you're an artist, how much do you actually play with your art, especially if you're a working pro, because that's that's where it gets tricky is, um, you know, you start doing jobs and all of a sudden fun time goes out the window. And, and uh, I know for people that work in like video games, uh, boy, it can get tight. Those are crazy deadlines. Comic book artists definitely deal with insane deadlines. But I think the video game industry probably is the one that is the most... Um, insane probably movie stuff too when you have to do special effects on movies which you know obviously is an artistic uh, endeavor that's really cool and um he actually talked about in um i think it's uh there's a pretty long interview with him that's in english on youtube that you can find too and uh he talks about um, when he was doing the blueberry comics that he would buy these travel magazines from the united states and a lot of his um landscapes were <laughs> are copied out of those books so look even mobius the great jean Giraud, used reference so as fantastical and creative as this art is for him to get these sort of muscles and the ability to draw things out of his mind um you know he was looking at real things to create that catalog of um imagery that then he can pull from his mind That'd be a cool sticker. Kind of looks a little Tarada-ish. Tarada is kind of a neat blend of um, styles. I see some Simon Bisley in his work at times. Okay, we're, we're at eight minutes. I'm going to do two more minutes, and then tomorrow, I'll, like I said, I'll pick this up because I'll get an earlier start. I'm getting a little bit of a late start today. And then the fact that I have to split. Man, that is great. I don't even remember this. Really, really killer inks on this, too. Very nice signature. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I wanted to do um, Arzak. Thank you, James. <laughs> I called it Azrak. I don't know. I'm a dumb guy that works by myself at home. I don't have, I don't have any friends correcting me with pronunciation of things, but I guess it's Arzak and not Azrak. I wasn't reading it probably properly. I don't have dyslexia. I have lazy reader syndrome. It's like you just glance at man, that's so kick ass. The lighting of the forms really gives it a three dimensional quality. It's really, really, man, the thing pops. I like that Otomo and Mobius ended up being kind of chums. I think that's really, really neat because they're two of my favorite artists. So it's it's really cool to know that they actually ended up syncing up, I think, at a point. Um, there's a few uh, relationship crossovers like that that uh, Mobius and Giger, I think, both worked on uh, some projects together. Not Not literally, like, hand in hand, but... I don't know if there's any Mobius pieces that have Giger in them. I bet there are. Like, like maybe he'll, like he'll do like a little nod to that. Now, this almost looks like Mike Plug a little bit, or vice, vice versa. 
right, we're creeping up on 10 minutes. I got to be careful. I, like I said, I don't want to miss this guy printing my page or tomorrow I won't be able to work and that's not good. I have a printer at home, but it's not 11 by 17. And I also, um, I'd rather have uh, the printer that I use because the, the printer at the shop is like an $80,000 printer that I print my blue lines on. It's it's, a, it's called a Rico. Um, it's a really high-end like floor printer. Um, and, uh, you know, they maintain it really good. So my blue lines look nice and clean and stuff like that. But I'm a little bit the mercy of their schedules. God, that is great. Um, and we're ending on two really, really kick-ass pieces. So um, anyway, like I said, I'll continue this tomorrow. I may not label as a part one, part two. But just know that if you got to the end of this video that, that we'll look at more Mobius tomorrow morning. Just um, because this is kind of like I'm going to work for probably the next 12 to 14 hours. So this is a nice way to start my morning and remember that. Um, when I'm creating art, uh, I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> it's not just work and grinding. It's like, hey, you know, people are going to read these stories and enjoy them, hopefully for years to come. Okay, cool. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Have a great day. And, uh, again, I apologize that this is so short. It's just a busy day. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Man, that was great. Woo! It's kind of a more fine line on this.